All right, back at it this morning. Next, what we gotta do is sheet this thing. We know this is a right angle. All you have to do, measure that, measure that, and connect the dots. To make the most of this board, I'm going to take off that tongue and then I can get my ankles going the same way and I'll have a lot more board left to save. Now you can see these boards don't exactly meet at the peak. I'm going to pull them up just a hair just to come to the edges of this 2x4. But now I can still see my mark where my two studs are running down these sides. Next up, we've got tar paper. I'm gonna use a 30 pound felt. Might as well use 30 rather than 15. I don't know if 15's even legal anymore with code, but uh, 30 pounds thicker. And you know, some people might wanna use some sort of membrane or Tyvek stuff or, you know, there's all sorts of new stuff out there, but I just like the thick tar paper. It's easy to get, it's cheap. I always have some somewhere in storage. So that's what I'm going with. But before I break out the tar paper and we get to the actual roofing section of this video, I just want to share a simple principle of roofing for those of you who've never done any sort of roofing before. The most important thing about roofing is that everything above overlaps everything below. If you remember that simple principle, you'll be doing really good. That's basically all roofing is, and that's why you hear the term shingled effect or shingling effect. That is everything down here gets overlapped by everything up here. Any way you look at it, overlapping up there, overlapping up here. As long as you keep that overlap with tar paper, with flashing, with shingles, with everything, that will keep the water moving in the right direction. Also, this roof is so steep, I'm not gonna bring my roll of tar paper up here because it's there's really no good place to cut it. So let's get maybe a couple of eight foot sheets of this. You can see I tuck it under the shingles that are above it and I'm gonna let it run over these shingles and I'm actually gonna cut it right here. You'll see. Same thing with this side. Under the shingles above and over the ones below and then I'll cut off that bit right there.
Now I know that looks really messy and there are definitely better ways to do this, but the thing is, this is gonna go down here and exit here. So all the water keeps getting directed back out and above the shingles. Now one thing, and maybe some roofers can comment about this, is I think some people might actually slit the old felt and go up under the old felt with the new felt and then you know that that's an even better precaution because obviously if water gets under the shingles it's gonna get on this felt here and it's gonna go under this and is still gonna make it into the inside of the building now I'm second guessing myself let me go get those wait let's pause here this is where I want to tell you if I had this to do over again, I would shingle the chimney cricket first and then the roof. That way the roof shingles would overlap the chimney cricket shingles. Just a matter of opinion. I think that's the way it's usually done. I found this uh, sort of sponge mat thing. I think it's designed for roofers on the side of the road. And I left it at my dad's house when we were working on the uh, garage. We actually didn't even get to use it for the roof because we found it right after we finished the roof. But I'm gonna go pick it up and see if that helps a little because I'd rather kneel down and, and be on a less slippery surface than keep using my rubber shoes and tearing up these shingles so much.
Well, I'm running out of daylight now, so I'm gonna have to get this buttoned up the best I can because it'll probably be a week till I can work on it and it might rain. So what I'm gonna do is put on this peel and stick flashing and I'm gonna actually I'm gonna split it in half because I don't need that much I just need enough to overlap that edge right there and I'm gonna come back and put counter flashing on this and show you how to do that or show you how I'm gonna do that I don't know if it's the right way so this will make a tight seal between the brick and this so if any water comes down the chimney it'll be shed off and it'll actually last a really long while this is a good temporary fix but I'm gonna come back and actually flash into the mortar. There we go. First I'm gonna tape this little seam right here. Don't cut this with a regular utility knife blade like I'm doing here. Use a hook blade or 10 snips. At the time, Lowe's didn't have any hook blades and I didn't know you could use 10 snips. tab shingles. I'm going to cut them, kind of taper them, and those are going to be my cap shingles. Yes, these cap shingles are not exactly the same color. In fact, they're not even the same brand. But close enough on something that's going to be hidden behind the chimney like this. It's not perfect, not even terribly neat. It's the first one I've ever done, but it looks like it is watertight, at least for tonight. So I can clean all this stuff off the roof and go eat my dinner. And then I'll come back next weekend 
and do the counter flashing over all that stuff. All right, you can't really see this, but it's uh, it's raining pretty good out here. finished the flashing yet. So this is just with the pricket and the peel and stick flashing. Let's see. Now yeah, it's a little sketchy. Let's see if we can see what it's doing up here. Pretty good. 